this is a final test that I put for some of my students in this semester. And let's just, I'm gonna solve it, okay? So maybe you can follow me around and see if I'm right or wrong, okay? So I am assuming that you already know how to do some of this stuff. And if you don't, you put that in the comments and maybe I can uh, help you out with that one, okay? So this is the data of the problem and they're asking me to get, I, again, this is one of my favorite, you know, my favorite book regarding thermodynamics and, and it's a really clever uh, example, okay? so. What, what it's telling you or what you can see out of this is that the steam turbine here is producing work or power, okay? So it's producing work and some of that work is going to the nitrogen compressor, otherwise it, it cannot be just fed from nothing. Somebody, somebody must be feeding this uh, nitrogen. So it's coupled, mechanically coupled to the steam turbine. So it's gonna be fed by the steam turbine, okay? Now the steam turbine is also uh, feeding the electricity generator. Otherwise, it cannot just move by itself, okay? So the big guy, the steam turbine, is actually producing all the work. Some of it, some of this is going to the nitrogen compressor. Actually, it's some of the data is not put over here, but I'm gonna put it. So 5.5 HP, okay, horsepower, are going into feeding the compressor. And you don't know how much is going to the electricity compressor, uh, to the, electricity generator, which is actually uh, question A, find the mechanical power to the generator, to the generator, okay? Now, the compressor works in such a way that after the, the compressor, you have a really hot uh, nitrogen gas, okay? That stream needs to be cooled down if you wanna use it for further processor or whatever. So what they put, they actually put is an after cooler. So this is just a heat exchanger that, uh, lowers the temperature of the really hot uh, gas stream that goes that goes out from the compressor okay so that's what they are asking uh, to get find the heat power release in the after cooler so how much heat you need to remove from that stream of hot nitrogen outside of the compressor and also as a byproduct of the procedure please find efficiency of turbine and compressor so i'm just going to start in from the problem okay so i'm going to do first three the three it's, oh gee, sorry. So one, and then two, and then three, and then four, and then five. So those are my states, okay? I need to uh, know those states in order to find out something about them. Maybe the temperature, maybe the pressure, maybe the entropy. So this is what, how I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna start with the steam turbine, okay? So for the steam turbine, I'm going to, um, data that I have at three. So data at three is 40 bar, okay? So 40 bar and 370 degrees Celsius. So I'm not using 370, I'm gonna use 375 degrees Celsius. And this is arbitrary because I wanna, um, you know, be uh, less complicated uh, the problem. Therefore, what I have over there, this is superheated steam. So super, this is a just superheated steam. So superheated steam okay so for that in the table of the single it's a6 okay so i will find values for 350 degrees celsius and for 400 degrees celsius since i'm having 370 so i'm i'm just gonna guess that i will put myself here right in the middle but right in the middle is 375 i'm thinking that this difference of five degrees celsius is not that relevant so out of that, out of that, I will get the H3 as an average from 350 and 40 and 400 degrees Celsius. So I will need myself H3 and S3. Okay. So that I'm just telling you how I got these numbers. This is actually not the number for 375 degrees. This number is going to be for 370. Uh, sorry. Uh, this 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 one the h3 is going to be for 375 not for 370 oh my god so confusing but it's just a matter of uh i i i don't need to be that precise here so after having said all that stuff this is 3173.9.9 uh, .9, and this one is just 6.677085 okay well this is what I got at the entrance of the turbine. Let's just go to the outside of the turbine. Out, outside of the turbine, what I have is the quality X4, which is 0.95. And I have the, um, uh, no, no, the, no, the entropy, but I have the pressure. 
pressure is 0.2 bars, okay, which is equally equals to 20 kilopascals. So after this, I know that I am at a wet steam. This is thing called wet steam, saturated steam inside the curve. I'm, I'm inside the curve. So remember the curve, right? This is a saturation curve, so I need to be around there. So at 20 kilopascals, I'm living around there. Okay, so this point over here is X4 equals 2.95. Well, good. Now, with that information, I need to get H myself at 20 kilopascals. I need to get HF and HG. And maybe you want to get SF and SG if you, if you need them. But I'm just going to stay with this guy so far. And after I use it, I want to get H4 equals to HF plus X4, which I already have, and HFG. Okay, so I got it, I got it, and I got it. Therefore, I can get myself the H4. Okay, so this is going to be a 2491.026, oops, 26 there, okay? Kilojoules per kilogram. Good, now just ask yourself, is this H4 something out of a real turbine or something out of an ideal turbine? So if you know data, you come from three. Okay, so I'm sorry, you are here at three and you have not assumed the S3 equals to S4. You have not done it, okay? Okay, if you have not done this because you have enough data at four to get whatever you need, okay? Therefore, this guy is actually a real data, okay? This is actually a real steam turbine, not an isentropic one. Well, okay, good. Imagine that you don't know that and you don't actually care, but that's how you can get that stuff done. Well, after that, what I'm going to do is say, well, look, buddy, um, what I can get from here is that now the work, the real work of the turbine is going to be the M3 and then H. Uh, I want this guy as positive. Therefore, I'm going to put H3 minus H4R. We have discussed about that positive or negative stuff. Now here, the value is gonna be positive because I just force it to be positive, okay? Since you already know that the turbine is actually putting out work as negative, therefore you can just play around with the sign. So I have put the uh, biggest guy, which is a three, minus the lowest guy, which is a four. Therefore, I want myself a value, a positive value, for the turbine since I already know where the work is going, okay? So I don't need to put it in negative, uh, in negative terms. Well, okay, so after having said that, again, this is just a review. I shouldn't be saying all this. I know that this is a hundred, but it's kilograms per hour. So I need to divide everything by 3000 so I can get kilograms per second. And this data is 3153.9 minus the 2491.06 that I got there. Therefore, my actual work out of that turbine is 19.524 kilowatts. Okay, well, there you go, there I go. Okay, now I can establish a balance for the work, okay? So the steam turbine is producing and feeding the compressor plus the generator okay this is data this was data long ago and this is what i have for uh, right now therefore i can get this fella over there which is the work received by the generator which is going to be 19.524 minus this guy goes this way as minus 5.5 HP, but I don't want this guy in horsepower. I want this guy in kilowatts. So what I have done here, I already have done it, is that one HP, okay, equals to 0.746 kilowatts. So you can do your th three rule or whatever the name is, and you can put here point, I'm sorry, 4.103, uh, 103 kilowatts. Okay, so this is this fella, do not forget about it. This is this guy over there. Uh, this is data, okay? So this guy is data, do not forget about it. So now I have solved the first part of the problem, which is 15.421 kilowatts. Good, good for us. Now we have that. 
Okay, so this is the A part of the problem. Good. Now, let's see what they're asking. It's about the after cooler, right? So I'm going to put again the after cooler here. So, so I don't know if you remember, but what goes out is two out of the compressor and into the after cooler. And what goes out of the after, after cooler, I put a five. Okay, so data. Let's just see about data. What I have here is 40 degrees Celsius and a hundred bar. So big freaking bar. Okay, this is actually 10 megapascals or 10,000 kilopascals. It's a really huge pressure. Now for two, two, let's see what I have at two. Nothing, okay, I don't know if you see, but there's nothing there as data. Okay, but you can assume some things. First, let's assume that P5 equals to P2. This is a typical assumption for uh, heat exchangers, okay? Therefore, I know that P2 should be equals to 10 megapascals. Same pressure over there. And what else? Well, nothing else. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do from one to two, but the isentropic way. Why are you doing that? Because I need data. So maybe I can find it. Okay, so let's just do it. So what I'm going to do is one P1 minus K, T1 K equals to P2 1 minus K and T2 K. This guy needs to be the isentropic. So I'm going to get myself the isentropic temperature at the outside of the, at the outlet of the compressor. Okay, so this is P1 divided by P2, this 1 minus K, this is K, and this is T1. So hopefully you see that I already have T1. K, K is just CP divided by CV, and for air or for any diatomic gas, K is actually 1.4, okay? So you don't need to struggle around too much with that one. I'm sorry, this is not air, this is nitrogen. It doesn't really matter, it's still a diatomic gas, therefore, phew, I almost missed that one. Okay, so this guy is 1.4. Now this is what I want to put, so you put over there uh, that. One, you know that if, since, you are, since you were a child. Now, P1 divided by P2. P1 divided by P2 is a uh, one bar divided by 100 bars. So let's just put data. You wanna put something, let's just put data. One divided by 100, so because this is bars, one minus 1.4 divided by 1.4, oops, 1.4, and everything's gonna be multiplied by 288. Remember, if you see the temperature just by itself without a delta, you always need to put that in Kelvin, okay? Because otherwise you will get wrong answers. Therefore, for me, I have the T2S equals to, let me see what I have found, a 1073.55 Kelvin. So 55 Kelvin, that's what I have over there. I, and you will say, okay, is that it? Well, what I can find over here is this. I already have this guy, right? Yeah, right, and then what? Now let's see what you have regarding the actual or the real compressor. So let me just go this way. And for the real compressor, you already find out that you receive from the turbine this amount of power, okay? So I can write an equation for this one, this M1, CP, T, 2R minus T1. What the hell are you doing? I'm doing an energy balance for the compressor. I already know how, how much power I received. I already know my mass flow going in, uh, uh, this, that's a stream of nitrogen. I already know the CP of the nitrogen. I don't know the actual temperature outside of the compressor, but I know how many of that got in. So why the hell did you cut T2S for? And I will tell you, Mm, well, maybe I need this guy for something later, okay? But so far I have that. And I just, just for this, I have T2R. For that equation, I will get how much is the real temperature at the outlet of that compressor. So uh, if you can do algebra, hopefully you can. Hopefully I can too. And this is what I will get over there. So let me just put you the real, what I have over here too. Please check that out. I can be wrong. I can always be wrong. Most of the times I will be wrong. And that's a good thing because we can improve. Okay, so I have that, right? Well, with this information, I can write an equation for this fellow over there. So let me just put it. For the after cooler, I can write, so whatever, whatever went out from this stream, whatever went out from this stream, I can put it as an energy balance as the M, 
of uh, two, okay, which is equals to five, which is equal to one, okay, CP. And now I'm gonna put T5 minus T2R. So got it, got it, got it, and got it. Therefore, I can get Q, which is, well, remember, this is this. I'm just using data of the problem. I'm not trying to explain everything. This is point 1.039, which is the CP for the nitrogen. And I have the T5, I already have it, it's 40 minus T2R, oh my God. So let me just put it like that. Because what I ha was having here, this guy was in degree Celsius and this guy is in Kelvin. You need to put in just one place. So let me just convert this fella into Kelvin. So right now, T5 is in Kelvin minus T2R, which is now you're still in Kelvin, 75 Kelvin. Therefore, it's just like that. Therefore, Q, okay, it's gonna be minus, this is what I have, okay? So how much do I have? I have rounded this stuff to minus four, minus four kilowatts. So check that out. Maybe I'm wrong, but please tell me. That's uh, exercise B, okay? And now, now this is what you got out of this, out of this um, uh, hot stream of nitrogen going into the heat exchanger, okay? You took that out, I don't know, with water, with air, with oil. I don't know with what you got that out. We don't really care. But we know that somebody took this heat. Somebody gained this heat, actually, because this guy lost, actually, this heat power that you put there, okay? So, well, let me just emphasize the numbers that I have used there. Well, fine. And now what about the efficiencies? Well, let's just see. Let's just go with the efficiency of the compressor. The efficiency of the compressor is a ratio of work. And I always need to apply more work, that's the real case, to a real compressor than to an isentropic one. So maybe you see that I can put this M1, CP, T, T2 minus T1 or T1 minus T2. It doesn't really matter. But what matters is that I need to put T2S minus T1 divided by M1 CP T2R minus T1. So I, I think you get the drill. These two guys just go. Uh, I had this and I had this and I had this and I had this. I have all of that. Therefore, I will just put it over here. So the efficiency of the compressor, um, that's why I got this guy, right? That's what I did that. So out of that, I will get that the efficiency of the compressor according to me, it must be 0.83. Okay, so 0.83, I, I think I rounded up, okay? Well, okay, so now you have one part of the problem C. Yeah, good, and what? Well, now let's just go and do for the turbine. Oh yeah, I remember we needed to put something, for, oh, I think I can do it here, uh, below here. So for the turbine, for the turbine, I'm gonna do this three to four S, okay? So I'm gonna do the three to four S, and this is not an ideal gas, so I don't need, if you put this, minus K, T, three K, and blah, 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 you would be wrong, freaking wrong, why? Because this is not an ideal gas, so let me just erase this, and so you need to do it in some other way. Which way? Well, the steam table way. So that's why I got S3 for. So S3 needs to be equals to S4. That is six point, remember this uh, number, 7785. So at 4S, at 4S, I will have this same S4, which equals to S3, and I will have the P4, which is equals to 20 kilopascals. Okay, now you need to find out it whether whether you are at saturated steam, maybe you are at wet steam, maybe you are at uh, superheated steam. But since uh, I'm already doing this, this will, this will be wet steam. I have done that, that procedure already. And X4S, okay, I will get it at 6.67785 minus the value of entropy. Okay, this is saturated liquid entropy at 20 kilopascals. And below I will put the difference between the saturated steam and saturated liquid entropy. So hopefully it's not that difficult for you to get this fell over there. This is just basic use of steam tables. I will get myself at 0 0.82, 64, yeah, 62. Okay, 0 0.82, well, this looks horrible. So since I am a perfectionist, yeah, right. 0.82, it shows, right? 
it shows in my notations that I'm a perfectionist. So I will get myself that H4S equals to HF plus X4S HFG. We have done this, but not with this quality. We have put the quality of the problem, which was 0.95. Now I'm gonna use this fellow over there. So H4S is gonna give me 2400, oh no, I'm sorry, 2200. So 2200 point something no just like that so kilojoules kilogram okay so this is the enthalpy outside of the ideal steam turbine now with this information i can go to this uh again ratio of works and for the turbine it's a little slightly bit different now for a turbine turbine now for a turbine turbine this guy needs to be i need always to do it i cannot get more than the isentropic case. So the isentropic case is bigger, therefore it goes low that, it belows that. So, oh, I almost there, I almost there. So we are almost there. So after this, I can put that M3, okay? And H3 minus H4R divided by M3, M3, H3 minus H4S. Yeah, I'm right. So this just goes out. I have this guy, I have this guy, I have, I have everything. And therefore, I will put that this, the, that value is, is around 0.695. Good. So we're set to go. Okay, so that's it, guys. See you in the next problem.